again. Yes, you want my Frika. Guess what I can suddenly do? You have hemorrhoids. I can cause epic dancing moments with the flick of my hands. I knew you would like that power. <gasps> Is that Kobayashi from The Law of Ueki? This anime and manga series by Tsubasa Fukushi centers around a tournament where 100 middle school students get to choose these weird and wacky powers. Why? Well, so that they can use these powers to fight each other until they faint, with the last one standing gain the mother freaking blank talent. A talent that can be anything they choose. <gasps> Does that mean I've been chosen to take part in this tournament? Yes, though due to parents not liking their middle school offspring fighting each other, we're doing a tag team tournament series where you'll be playing our licensed games based on the Law of Yuki games you can buy today. I get to live in a moment with anime games and not ruin my perfect hair? I'm in. Wait, tag team? Yep, and your partner is right there. Hey, my adorable mascot, Timmy the Taco. Did you suddenly get any cool new powers? Yeah! What? The powers you got were based on your personalities. Oh well. <laughs> Let's play these anime games to have fun. Let's freaking do this! The Law Yueki's Game Boy Advance game is a 2D fighting game developed and published by Banpresso, who has a history with making licensed anime fighting games. And just like with most licensed anime fighting games, they got the basic story mode that follows the anime in which you watch some scrolling text and cutscenes, defeat an enemy, and boom! Rinse and repeat! Thankfully, the fights aren't as repetitive as the way they tell the story. You get fights in which you're trying to climb this giant robot to defeat it. Fights in which you're dealing with these secret agents who are constantly laying traps against you. There's this mopo who can somehow make it rain rocks. Ooh, but none compared to having to fight this guy who's just floating in a bubble above you. <laughs> Seems easy enough. With the only way to defeat him being, no joke. <laughs> Climbing the playground to whack him down. What the? Why aren't you fighting me? Fighting inferiority? Slide superiority. What does that even mean? It means that we're gonna talk about the amount of amazing moves this game offers. Okay, at first you get the basic moves you expect. We're talking a basic jab, guarding, jumping, yeah, get the gist. As time goes on though, you start to unlock a whole variety of special moves in this game that, while well, limited with this meter here, are really fun and creative. And with 11 total special moves to unlock, there's a little bit of everything depending on your playstyle. Ueki, the character you are playing, has the power to turn trash into trees, so expect a lot of creative and fun special attacks based on this concept. We're talking this tree cannon that shoots pretty far, this tree fist that wham, comes up out of the ground. Heck, Ueki somehow was able to make tree rollerblades to move faster, and I kinda love it! Hey, psst. You want to move rollerblades? Yes, please. What? And you'll need all the help you can get, as this game has a scoring system. You can get a score ranging from E, the worst, to S, the best in the game. One of the ways you can earn a good score is by completing whatever mission each stage tells you to do. These missions are pretty simple. I mean, you have to complete things like having to jump 30 times in a battle, finishing the fight with a special move, and not getting hit the entire battle. There is one mission that is heinous, horrifying, pretty much impossible to do in, might I add, a video game that's based off a family friendly anime series.
making me fight in a fighting game. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have to conform to this devil nonsense. As this game not only gives you points for doing this mission, but also for, get this, fighting in style, introducing the style point system. In the system, you start with a set amount of style points depending on your difficulty. Be warned though, every second from the in-game timer loses 20 style points. How do you increase these style points you might wonder? Well, you just have to get as many combos as possible. And, as you can imagine with the whole variety of moves this game has, there is a ton of combo potential here that's so satisfying. Be warned though, different attacks give you a different amount of style points. Heck, some attacks don't even give you style points at all. I'm looking at you, Wood Rollerblades. Does that intrigue you even more? You just put glasses on a tree. And speaking of cool, you can get some cool stuff if you get good scores in this game. One of the names you get are these talent cards. In the anime, each tournament entrant had a variety of talents like being a good dancer or being good with women. It would have been cool to use these talents to have boost when fighting, but they are just collectibles in this game. <laughs> Something you unlock that is useful though are the mini games. There are a total of 4 of these mini games you can unlock. They admittedly are pretty basic though. You got this fake arrows mini game that has you trying to hit the fake arrow while dodging the real ones. There's this punching mini games in which you must time at the right time to punch it back. There's this balanced one in which you must stay on the platform where balls shoot at you. And then there's this grasping power mini game where you must <laughs> attack flies. <laughs> <laughs> This game, however, won't bug you though. Overall, this was just a nice charming game that only takes about 5 hours to complete. It won't blow you away or anything, but hey, not every adventure needs to be a grand one. There are little live in the moment adventures too that can be just as awesome. And this game is an amazing example of that. If I'm gonna play every single anime game out there, I might as well have fun doing it. <laughs> Ugh, you had to remind me that I did it for work. It's not fun now. Ooh, we need to come up with a cool name for a tag team. Because a cool name master are awesomeness to me. Think about it, we'll be the talk of a town with a cool name. Yeah! Uh. Let's live in a moment with the next Law of Yuki game, shall we? A couple of months before the Law of Yuki Game Boy Advance game came out, a PlayStation 2 game by Bandai came out as well. Just like Grand Fresco, Bandai is no stranger to anime fighting games as well. And with this game being on a much more powerful system than the Game Boy Advance, there's bound to be a bunch more story, moves, and content in general with this game. And while it's still a fighting game, it does have some differences from the last game. Right away, you'll notice that you are fighting in this 3D arena in which you're able to explore around and jump between different areas of the stage, which is pretty cool. <laughs> oh, the enemy I need to defeat is all the way across the map. No problem. <laughs> Oh, he can spawn these shadowy dinies, no big deal. <laughs> well, it's time for me to use my ultimate strategy. Run away! Run away! Ah! <laughs> 
Finally, after 10 minutes of running back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, I finally got you cornered. <laughs> <laughs> And he spams annoyingly overpowered enemies to you as well while running away until you corner him for a chance to hit him once and then you rinse and repeat again until you hit him like 10 times until he's dead and then you have to like beat a boss battle after this to which if you die, lol, start the entire chapter over. I have some opinions about this game, just as the fact that this game is hard, and not in a fun way. Thankfully, there are a ton of items scattered throughout the game that will cause you to run faster and have a shield. Just like the last game, you also have the ability to perform a special attack, though this time it's via a this real mechanic, which freezes the screen while you do the input for set attack so enemies can't dodge them which, as you can imagine, was very helpful for dealing with these quick mofos. If you want to make this game bearable though, you have to do a ton of backtracking. You see, this game gives you experience points for every battle you beat. The more experience points you get, the stronger you are. Since the difficulty of this game is so high, the game expects you to play the first stage over and over again to get experience points until you're strong enough to defeat the latest stage. But this is where my genius comes into play. I figured out how to be powerful without doing these tedious battles. Just like the last game, this game has mini games to play. Rather than the mini games being just these fun unlockables, you can get some experience in these games. The majority of mini games are the same as the last game. But there's this falling meteor game in which you must block as many meteors as possible. The more meteors you block, the more experience points you get. Now, normally, you can only block two or three at a time before you can't block anymore. But let's just say I figured out a way to permanently block a whole bunch of meteors, resulting in the game going crazy on the meteors to account for the sudden power change, which results in an overwhelming amount of experience points. Repeat this mini game for an hour and boom! You got the power equivalent to a mother freaking god. Yo, Rock! What? Yo, stupid! Ooh, what you gonna do? You gonna hit me? Oh no, please don't! Your appearance in Jump Force was almost as bad as the game itself. You know what? I've been observing you. You know your whole live in the moment philosophy of yours. Let's be real here, life isn't all sunshine and rainbows. There are bills to pay, responsibilities to take care of, and sometimes, just sometimes, it wouldn't hurt to occasionally pause for a moment and think about the bigger picture. But, but, but anime games get, get to me yeah. So, how was I able to permanently block these meteors? Well, with the permanent blocking talent card. That's right, unlike the last game where the talents are just these cool decorations, you can actually use them, and better yet, you can see how the cards influence your character's attack, defense, etc, etc. Heck, some cards even have special properties. There's cards that give you the ability to permanently block like I mentioned, there's this gesture card that gives you a jump increase, the fire card makes you immune to lava, and then there's the talent of genius. Which, I don't exactly know what it does, but it says it allows us to start with mass heavenly power. Don't prick with me, Rock! I have the power of God and anime by my side! While the notion of wielding the power of God and anime may be exhilarating, true strength often lies in the ability to navigate life's challenges with wisdom and grace. 
Life isn't merely about the flashy displays of power or the thrill of the moment. It's about understanding ourselves, our place in the world, and the impact of our actions on those around us. I don't want to enjoy life anymore. <laughs> All right. So we got the outside scene done. But there is some living a moment enjoyment with this game. Firstly, I love how this game looks. It has that cool cell shaded vibe that I really love. And the stages are definitely a highlight in the game as well. There are a ton of quirky and fun gimmicks that stages throw at you. I mean, playing jump rope while fighting a baddie is something I didn't know I needed in my life. And I love it! And there clearly was a lot of love for the fan service in this game as well. Pretty much every person Yueki fights in the anime is here. Heck, you can not only play as Yueki, but also play as four other characters from the series. For by you unlock them of course via a game mother freaking bingos on your talent and item collecting seat. All of the characters pretty much have the same story though. I mean, once you unlock the final boss in this game, you're still facing yourself as the final boss in your own story. Which really questions your output on life. This is sad. Who turned off the light? <laughs> this is such a... <laughs> Timmy! All in all, the law of Ueki games are pretty much the typical shown games you would expect. Both good and questionable. But hey, I'm glad there's games that represent the really cool and quirky powers this series is known for. The only thing I wish both of these games had were versus modes in it, as it's quite weird that both of these games are single player only. Wait, none of the games have multiplayer options? How are we supposed to do a tournament with these games? Mew ha 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 ha. Kobayashi? I'm not Kobayashi, but... <gasps> you fell right into my trap. Just like how you earn experience points whenever you win a battle, whenever someone plays the Law of Yuki games, I earn experience points. Yeah, I imagine you were pretty weak for a while since no one plays these weird obscure shown games. Silence. Now that I have all this power, I can rule the world. How about this? I do battle, and if I win, you can do your take over the world cheesiness thingy. But if you win, you get an adorable mascot as your sidekick. Deal. Though I can't imagine you beating me with your Lameo dancing power. Heck, I'll even let you pick the rules for the fight. Rock, paper, scissors. Wait. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <gasps> I win! God. There was supposed to be some epic fight where you and Timmy learned to work together despite your differences in power and you it would have been a beautiful cliche ending. 